Today's daf we're going to be learning is Yavama Daf Tet. Today's daf is sponsored by Professor Jonathan Ben Ezra in honor of his wife, Dr. Robin Zeiger. I'm so proud that we were able to finish Seder Moed together. Today's daf is also sponsored by Jennifer and Joshua Lankin in loving memory of Jennifer's brother, Avig Dorchai Avraham Ben Rachel Le'ah Meir Tzvi, in, and in honor of her grandma, Marilyn Kamen, daughter Adi, and all Agunot on this International Aguna Day. My grandmother is an inspiration through her daf learning, and I pray my daughter Adi will grow up to love learning Torah. Okay, I want to start with a comment on what happened yesterday. Yesterday, we ended Shear with this um, issue about Yibum Ba'al Korcha, okay? Somebody doing Yibum with someone against her will. I saw a lot, a lot of harsh reactions to this. And I want to, number one, point out that I maybe made a mistake by not dealing with it properly. It was at the end of class and I had to get my daughter out to um, costume day at school. Um, so sometimes things like that happen and we didn't have time to deal with it. But I also want to kind of, make a comment to everybody who had the harsh reactions that you should be wary of reacting with to the Gemara in such a way without seeing the full picture, okay? We're talking about people here who haven't seen every daf of Yavamot, and even if you have, you might not remember it all. And when you learn the Gemara, you're learning one little snippet that's part of a very big picture. And it's very important not to take one thing and say, Wait, how could the Gemara say this without actually fully understanding it? And I did mention at the end of class, although I think it got a little bit lost there, that we will deal with this as time goes on. But I know it's hard for people to, to understand that. And it's like I said in the beginning of Yavamot, it's like watching a movie in the beginning and you don't exactly understand what's going on. And as it, the stories unfold and the details unfold, you'll get a fuller picture. But despite my wanting to wait till we see things inside, I see the reactions and I want to deal with it right now and explain to you something about this background. The first thing I have to say about this is I don't believe that the Gemara really thought that this was a situation that was going to happen, number one, okay? And I'll tell you why, because it brings this up in the context of, okay, um, and we'll see this, what I did was it really comes up in the Gemara, but it's often better when you see it in, um, in the Rambam. The Rambam explains things very clearly and succinctly. So what I did was I'm bringing you the Mishnah Torah of the Rambam. The first thing I want to read is actually the second halacha, okay? The Rambam in Hulchot Yibum V'chalitza, Perik Bet, Halacha Aleph Tibet. Okay, we're going to read Halacha Bet first. Habal Yivim To, this is based on, is straight out of a Gemara. It's actually quoted in Nezikin, okay? Because Nezikin talks about if you do damages, whether you do it accidentally or by accident or you were forced to, etc. Habal Yivim To, someone who sleeps with his Yivama, Bain bishogeg, bain bimezid, unwittingly or on purpose. Okay, how you would do it bishogeg is hard to understand. Bain b'ones, bain b'ratzon. Bain shayhu mezid v'hi shogeget, o anusa. Okay, whether he was intentional or shogeget, or anusa. Bain shayhu mezid v'hu shogeg. They even bring the opposite, o anus. It could be he's anus, first of all. Notice the, the both directions. Bain shayta yishay, now whether she was sleeping or awake. Bain shabala kedaka. Okay, we're not going to get into all this, but that's the first thing to know. So why is this important? And we'll bring back the first halacha in a minute. The Gemara, first of all, in Nizikin, and I think it might come up in Yavamot also, I don't remember, but I remember it specifically from Nizikin, talks about a case where somebody falls off a roof, I think it is, falls onto the woman, has relations with her as he's falling onto her, and with that, he fulfills the mitzvah of Yibam. Now, you might say, oh, right, so that's about as unrealistic as King B. Right? You can't get more unrealistic than that. So what's my point? My point is the Gemara is discussing theoreticals here. They're not talking about practically what would happen if someone did this. They're saying theoretically, because the Torah words it all in the masculine, and it says, Yivama, Yavo, Aleha, where he is the main player. So the first point to understand is, it's just taking a drasha from the Pasuk and saying, theoretically, if this were to happen, that would be the case. They're not saying, we expect this kind of case to happen, just like they don't expect a man to fall off the roof, onto unclothed, onto an unclothed woman, have relations with her accidentally, and uh, let's be real, right? Let's be real. That's not happening. Likely, this isn't happening either, and I'll give you some other proofs. First of all, we saw already that the woman can say, I don't want to do yibum, I want to do chalitza. So, therefore, yibum ba'al korcho is pretty irrelevant, because she'll probably, right, unless he really rapes her, which is unlikely, but that's what he's going to do, right? She can say, I'm not interested. But I want to show you the next step, which is even more interesting in my mind, which is, the rabbis didn't like this either. So for all you people who are upset about this, the rabbis were also upset about this, okay? And they changed things. And this is what's amazing about the halachic system. The rabbis come and say, I'm going to warn you right now, okay? Because of all these reactions, I 
I'm, I'm doing this. It's going to cost us a little bit because the last case of the Gemara is quite complicated today. But hopefully you'll bear with me. And if she is a little longer, it will be. But midivrei sofrim, the rabbis say, shelo yavo hayabam ayivim to, ad shi kadesh ota b'fnei shnei edim, b'pruta o b'shavet pruta. V'zehu anikha ma'amar. We're going to learn about ma'amar, which is basically, the rabbis said, even though the Torah says, how do you fulfill yibum by having sexual relations? But, they said, we want to make this more like marriage. Marriage, you don't do it. First, you have kiddushin, which you can do through sexual relations, but the rabbis didn't really approve of that. They instituted that you should really do it, right? There's three ways to do it. We'll get all to that in kiddushin. But you should really do it first with money or, you know, some sort of, right? That's why we have a ring. They instituted the same thing, and it's called ma'amal, because you make a declaration, okay? And they did that, right? They said... Better not to do yibum without this first stage. Okay, so therefore they said you can't. Now, oh, I forgot. Oh, it's not here. Okay, fine. I'm going to just tell you. I don't know why it's not here. I thought it was here. But anyway, I just remembered. I forgot to say this in the Hebrew class. But anyway, we'll go on a little bit more. Okay, it's, it doesn't work on a Doraita level because it's not a Torah law. Lo asa klum. Here you have it. Okay, and this is based on the Gemara later. Okay, so that's why I said you can't just look at one thing in a vacuum. If you do ma'amal without her, against her will, you didn't do anything. In other words, what they're saying is ma'amar without her wanting it is invalid, just like kiddushin is invalid. Fine. Okay. The part that I somehow missed here that I wanted to bring is that, and the Gemara says this, if someone does yibum without ma'amal, they give him lashes. Okay. They didn't want people to do this. And ma'amal needs her consent. So basically they neutralized this whole halacha. So for anyone who was bothered by it, so were the rabbis and the rabbis changed it. Okay. So you have, you might say, well, how could the base halacha and the Torah be that way? But again, I think that sometimes the rabbis are dealing with reality. Maybe the Torah, it was just more like, okay, the man is supposed to be the one to to make this happen. But it doesn't, just, and then the rabbis say, well, it looks like, you know, she has no part in it. But then the rabbis kind of say, well, we're going to ma- make her have a part in it. We're going to make her be, you know, that she has to have a say in the matter. So anyway, we're going to, like I said, we're going to see this much more inside. We have a homo sechet and we're going to deal with a lot of these issues. So again, I'll just warn you, try not to react so strongly, negatively, when you see something without understanding the full picture, okay? And like I said, I'll try more. If I do say something that, you know, sometimes opens a bomb, I'll try to address it more at the time, although I just don't always have the time to do it, okay? Like you'll see today, we're going to pay a price. Okay, here we go. Rabbanan hai ale mai avidle. So now the question is this. What we had was we had Rebbe and we had the rabbis, and Rebbe learned his whole drasha from Likacha Yibma. That's how he learned you can't do Yibam on Isra Arayo, which was the basis for our Mishnah, and for the Tzarot and the Tzarot Tzarot. The rabbis learned it all from the word Aleha. So the word Aleha in the Pasuk, Yishalach Hotel, Lo Tikach Litzor, the Galot, Yavata Aleha, that's how he learned it. What, what does Rebbe do with the word Aleha then? He doesn't need it for that drasha. So what does he do with it? So now, again, we need a lot of background to today's stuff. We're going to open the study guide. Okay, and we're going to look through a bunch of verses in the Torah because we're getting off on a total tangent. Luckily, for people who were in shul this week, this was Parshat Shavua. So it might be a little bit familiar, even though it might be a little bit of an unfamiliar section. But by the time you finish getting through all of the Gemara, this will not be so unfamiliar because we're going to see it many times. Bayikra chapter 4 has a list of four people, four categories of people who make mistakes. Okay, the whole section starts off, Nevesh ki if somebody does something unwittingly, from any of the mitzvot, it sounds like any of the mitzvot, and soon we're going to learn the whole drush has to tell you it's not any of the mitzvot, okay? But right now it sounds like, again, again, another good example. The Torah seems to say it one way. The rabbis are going to tarshan it a different way. And then it starts listing who and what they bring. So if it's a Kohen Mashiach, which basically means the Kohen Gadol, he brings a par ben bakal, a bull, okay, a bull offering. If it's Koladat Yisrael, that's Pasuk Gimel, the whole, pe- right, we have... The whole community, which is usually considered the majority of the people of Israel, make a mistake, right? Usually it's because the court taught something incorrectly. Everybody went by the court and it turned out it was a mistake. So they bring a par ben bakar. That's what we call in other words, and it comes up many times. Par elem davar shel tzibor. We saw this, I believe it was in Yoma, when we had the par of the Kohen Gadol and we compared the par and the, the par. Okay. Nasi. 
you have the, the head of the community, right? The Nasi or the head of the people. And he brings the Seir Izi. Okay? If he makes... If, uh, if he does something wrong, since, again, he and the Kohen Gadol, they're kind of in a different position. They have to bring a special korban. He brings a si'iri zi. Yachid says, Im He brings si'irat izi. Okay, that's a female si'ir izi. Now, Im Bamipar Tepav, it has a very similar section. It says, If you make a mistake and you don't do it, Kolo Mitzvot Ha'ela Shetzibar Shema Moshe, what he told you, blah, blah, blah. And if Me'ine Ha'idane Asalish Gaga, so everybody brings a parbim bakar chad ola and a series in chad chata. Now it seems weird. We already said if you make a mistake, and what do we say? You bring a par. Here it says a par la ola and a seir la chata. So what's going on? So Rashi, based on the Gemara, says, okay, number one, he says in the second Rashi here, v'chitishku b'avodah zara katu b'dabel, and he brings this bride that says, how do we know it's about right? Maybe it's all the other mitzvot, but it already said all the other mitzvot, so it must be this is avodah zara, which is compared to all the other mitzvot. So basically. The rabbis understand that this whole section of Bamibar, which talks about, number one, the community, and then further on in, Ch- in Pasuk 15, it says, they bring an A's. If an individual does it, he brings an A's. Then it means this must be if they make a mistake in Avodah Zarah specifically. There's a unique korban. So we now have, right, let's talk. We have Koim Mashiach, the whole people, the Nasi, an individual, the community for Avodah Zarah and the individual for Avodah Zarah. Six different sacrifices. And then at the end of the section of Avodah Zarah, I'm giving you the background for all the verses that we're going to darshan soon. It says, There's one rule for all of you who do things unwittingly. And whoever does this, whatever, gets correct. Okay, that's important for you to see. Now I'm going to leave up the sheet because I made a lot of charts about this. Okay, the first chart on the page is all the previous drashot. The first four are the ones we darshaned, who learns from where what. And then we have this new halacha that Rebbe is going to darshan from Aleha. Okay, so right now we're on the fifth line of the fifth row of that chart. So starting now, okay, we're only getting started now with the daf, a lot of introductions, but let's go. Rebbe, hi Aleha me Avile. What does he do with the word Aleha? Me baile, look at the he needs it for the following drasha. En chayavim betin, that's the par helen davar shel tzibor, if the court teaches something incorrectly. They're not chayavim ela, and as for what did I have to bring a korban, we're going to see. Only al davar shes dono karet v'shigato chatat. If we make a mistake about something small, we don't bring, if it's not, if it's a regular lo tase, we don't bring a korban. We only bring it if, if it's davar shes dono karet. If it's something that if we did it, on purpose, we would have gotten karet, and now we did it right. But if you do it unwillingly, you bring a you bring a chatat. That's what we bring this par helen davar shel tzibor for. Okay, that's the first drasha. Okay, and now we're going to see it further down here. Okay, shitav rebbe. Where do we learn beitim? Beitim means par helen davar shel tzibor. We learn it from arayot. How do we get it? We'll see in a minute. The chena mashiach. By the way, this zdono karet shegato chatat category is true not only for par helen davar shel tzibor, also. Chena Mashiach, also for the Kohen Mashiach. V'lo b'avodah kochavim, el al davar shez dono karet v'shigato chatat. Okay, it's basically applicable to the Kohen Mashiach, to the avodah kochavim, all these things, and we'll see even more. Utna nami, and there's another mission that goes even into more detail. Kol mitzvah she b'torah shechayavim al dono karet v'shigato chatat. They're coming a little bit from a different perspective. This bright it says, any mitzvah that you get karet for if you do it on purpose, and <clears throat> if you do it accidentally, on those things, I'm not going to explain all those one by one, but that's exactly this chart over here, and it's exactly what I showed you in the Psukim. So if it's something that, it has to be something that's dono karen that's the main thing we're going to darshan out, how do we get that? And that's going to be true across the board for all these. And then each one has their individual sacrifice that they bring. So where do we get this all from? It says in a bright time. Okay, so what does that mean? This is this is the verse. Okay, let's just go back down to the psukim. Okay. Sorry. That's in the... Sorry, I thought it was here. 
mistake. Let's just look at, okay, sorry. Vayikra Dalid Yudalid. This is Parhalim Davar Shaltzibur. If they find out in Vayikra Dalid Yudalid, if they find out that they did something, then it says Vikrivu Par Bin Bakal. So now notice the word Aleha, right? Asher Chatu Aleha. There's our word Aleha that we've been jarshaning. Rebbe Omer, Nemar Kan Aleha, Vinemar Lahalan Aleha. Now we want to get back to our Pasuk about Isha Lachota. Now Isha Lachota, what's the situation? If you do it purpose, on purpose, you get karet. If it's accidental, you bring a chatat. So ma lahalan, davar shechayvim al zono karet, ashen gato chatat. Just like by Isha Lachota, the arayot, it's karet and chatat. Afkan, therefore, from the word aleha, by parhalim davar shechayvim al davar shechayvim al zono karet, ashen gato chatat. Okay, and now what we're going to do according to Rebbe, we're going to now darsh, and once we have the parhalim davar shechayvim is on, on something that's karet and chatat, then, and that we learned from our Ayot, that was our whole, that's how we got there. We're now going to learn from Paralim Davar Shal Tzibur, from all other Gzera Shavas. This again is Gzera Shava. Aleha, and, right, Aleha here, and Aleha there. Now we're going to do the same thing with all the other cases. Eshkachan Tzibur, okay, so we get Tzibur is that, what about Mashiach? What about the Kohen Gadol, Minalan? Dichtib ba Mashiach la'ashmata'am. Here it's not exactly Gzera Shava, but it says la'ashmata'am, what do we learn from there? Hare Mashiach Kitzibur. That teaches us he's like the nation. So whatever's true for the nation is true for him. It would only be a chatat. That uh, it would only be if there's karet, if you did it on purpose. And again, this wouldn't apply for any sin that he did that wasn't karet, that wasn't punishable by karet. Yachivin Asi. Where do we get that? Ake mitzvot mitzvot. Okay? Okay, now we have Basu Achamikom mitzvot Hashem by Tzibur. We have Asa Mikom Mitzvot Hashem by the Nasi, and we have Asut HaCham Mitzvot Hashem by the Yachid. So because it appears Mitzvot by the Paralim Davar Shal Tibur, and we know that's only Karet, so therefore the Nasi says Mitzvot, the Yachid says Mitzvot, therefore we're going to learn from one to the other. V'lo ba'avodah kochavim el al davar shez dono karet, shechayavin al zdono karet al shagato chatat. How do we know now by Avodah Zarah that it's only in that case also? So again, V'dach Chochavim is going to split into community, does it? Or an individual, does it? So Yachid, Nasi, and individual will be Yachid, Nasi, or Mashiach. Those are all individuals, but different types of individuals. They're going to usually be clumped together because there's this pasuk that says, Im Nefesh Echad. Nefesh Echad means one person. And that's going to include any individual, whether he's a Yachid, a Nasi, or a Mashiach. Yachid, Nasi, or Mashiach, me, again, Mashiach doesn't mean Mashiach. Mashiach means Kohen, Mashiach, which means he was anointed, which means he's the Kohen Gadol. So, Yachid Nasi V'Mashiach Mi V'im Nefesh Echad. Okay, when it says there, by Avodah Zarah, if you see, one second, going back to the verses. Sorry, I went too far. By Avodah Zarah, remember in Pasuk Kav Zayin, in Bamibar, chapter 15, it says, V'im Nefesh Echad Techta B'Shgaga. So, Im Nefesh Echad comes to Echad Yachid, Echad Nasi, V'Echad Mashiach B'Mashma. Now, how do you get from there that it's connected to what we, it is also in us. Once we got the tzibur, oh, sorry, I think I skipped a line. Tzibur ba'avodah kochavim yalef me'ene me'ene. Okay, by tzibur here, it says in Avodah Zara, it says, vayayim me'ene ha'idah ne'estash lishkaga. Okay, I didn't, forgot to bold everything. But im me'ene ha'idah, that's in Pasuk Kafbed in Bamidbar. And it says me'ene in the par ha'lem davar shal tzibur. So that's how we learn, okay, Vayayim and David Ben Israel, yes, Yishku, they'll make a mistake, Pasuk Yigimel, Vine'elam Hadavar Me'ene Kahal. So Me'ene Me'ene, that teaches us by Tzibor. How do we get the Yachid? Well, after it mentions the Tzibor in Tebav, it then says Ve'im Nefshecha. Ve connects it to what was above, whatever's true for above is true for here. Chad Yachid, Chad Nasi, Chad Mashiach, Bemashma, right? In Nefshechad includes them all. Vav Mosif Alinyam Rishon, Vav connects it. And then we learned the previous from, right, we learned this part from the previous section. Okay, so basically, we learned Paralim Davar Shaltzibor from Isha Lachota. From there, everything else was connected to, to Paralim Davar Shaltzibor, either directly or indirectly as the individual in Avodah Zarah was learned from the Tzibor of Avodah Zarah. Now, the whole question, which is going to complicate things even more, is, okay, that's Rebbe. Rebbe started off with the Strasha of Aleha. Now, the rabbis don't have the drashah of Aleha free because they use Aleha for our Mishnah. So how are they going to darshan all this? There's, okay, they're going to darshan it a little bit simpler. Rabbanan ha'isfara menale. Nafkale, but they're going to go the reverse. We started from Paralim Davar Shal and we ended 
with those last verses of Avodah Zarah. This is going to be the flip. We're going to start with the very last verses of Avodah Zarah at the very end of that section. In Bamidbar Kavtet, it says, They all have the same law. And anyone who does this on purpose, gets curried. So what are they going to say here? Rabbanan say like this. They learn it from what Rabbi Yeshua told his son. There's one rule that connects all of these, right? They're all the same, even though they're not all the same, right? We just said they're all different. But what's the same about them? Well, and then it says, which means karet is in that pasuk. That's going to be our proof that it's all karet. They basically take the individual in Avodah Zarah and they say, look, by the individual it says, whoever does this, right, will get karet. And then they're basically saying, right, Avodah Zarah is karet. So therefore, and then it says Torah Achat, that's going to include any nefesh, right? Ha nefesh, which is an individual, is going to have to be karet, okay? Individual by Avodah Zarah. So Eshkachan Yachid Nasi Mashiach, Bein Ba'avodah Kochavim, Bein B'Shar Mitzvot. What basically this says is, anyone who does Bishkaga. So now, it's basically saying, any individual who does Bishkaga, it's a very easy way to include more categories all at once. Yachid Nasi Mashiach, whether they did Avodah Zarah or whether they did all mitzvot, they're all included in this pasuk, and they're all the same. Has to be karet. Sibur b'avodah kochavim minayim. But where do we get the community? Ah, the same thing we did before, but the reverse. Vi'im nefesh yelamed al yom mitachtom. We're going to switch the order. Vi'im nefesh connected the right. The last section started with vi'im nefesh and. And connected it to the previous section. The previous section was the Tzibor and Avodah Zarah. And therefore, whatever's true for this is going to be true for that as well. We're doing, instead of saying, and comes to say, let's learn from above. It's, and comes to say, what, what we learn below is true for above. Now they say, uh, The one thing we're left with, which is funny, because that's where we started in the first one, is the Par Helem Tavar Shel Tzibor. Where do we get that? We're going to do again the reverse Gzei Shava we did before. Yelif me'ene me'ene. Remember me'ene appear by the tzibur of avodah zarah, and the ene appear by the tzibur of a regular sin. And therefore, we're going to compare and say the parallel of our tzibur when the tzibur makes a mistake on any other mitzvah that we're going to learn out from the tzibur of avodah zarah. Okay, so it's it's kind of an undoing, right? It's the exact reverse direction of the drashot that we did before. Okay, you can go. I know this sounds a little bit confusing, but it's actually pretty organized. And if you look back at the chart, it should help you organize it all. Now we're left with a few ping pong still. Rebbe, hi Torah achat my avidle. What does he do with Torah achat? That pasuk was only used by Chachamim. He didn't darshan that pasuk at all. Mebaile lechidetanya. This Torah achat he needs for a different thing. Okay. One thing you have to know about a vodasara is there's an individual can do a vodasara. Here we see the community, right? And there's kind of this either the majority of the people or an individual. What is it mentioned there? If you do Avodah Zarah on purpose, there's a new, there's a unique halacha called an Ir Hanidachat. What if a whole city worships Avodah Zarah? Now, a whole city, right, let's say my city, Ranana, that's not the majority of the Jewish people, but it is an entire city. And it has its own unique laws if I were to do it intentionally. We basically bring all of our property, our possessions to the middle of the city. We burn the city. Everybody gets killed. Everybody gets killed by Saif, which is by the sword. It's a, one of the lesser of the punishments of the Beitin, as opposed to, let's say, Skila, which is very severe. I'm specifically mentioning those because we're going to see in the Gemara in a second. So they say like this. Since when you do it intentionally, there's a split between an individual and a community. An individual gets Skila, which is the most severe, if you worship a Vodazara, but because you get such a severe punishment, we don't burn all your possessions. The city gets a weaker, a lesser punishment, a less severe, but mamonam palat, we destroy all their possessions. So it's kind of, right, there's balance here. But the point being that they each have their own unique halachot. It's not the same for an individual and for a city. So now they're going to suggest, maybe they have their own unique sacrifice. Right? We had, an individual has its own unique sacrifice. We had the community. But what about a whole city? Is there a unique sacrifice? Were they to do it unintentionally? The whole difference was an intentional. What if it's unintentional? Talmud Lomal, that's why it says, Torah achat 
There's one law for all of them. That's to tell you, even a city does the same as an individual. He basically asks on, what was your Havamina? What were you thinking? Right, your whole thing is that there's a drashat to tell you. Otherwise, you would have thought it would have its own unique korban. And he basically says, it's a bit of a strange question, but he says, what korban did you think they were going to have? And that everything's kind of taken, is what he's going to basically say. My light to, what would you bring? Light to pal, you would say a bowl. Well, it's Yibor B'Shanei Mitzvot, That's what the whole community brings. Kisba, if you want to bring that, Yachim B'Shar Mitzvot, Well, an individual brings that for other mitzvot. Seir Nasi, this is Seir, sorry, the, the goat. Nasi B'Shar Mitzvot, Udemaitim. The Nasi brings that. Parla Ola V'Sir L'Chatat, the Sibor B'Avadach Kuchavim Udavide. Right, he brings all the possibilities. He basically said, everything's taken for something else. You want a unique korban? Well, they're all taken. All you're left with really is Seira. Well, Yachid Nami Hainu Korbano. That's also the individual's Korban if they did a Vodasar. So, what exactly were you thinking? Itzrich. No. I really thought so because Sachadat Hachamina Ho Il Vitzibor Bahora'a. My two parla ola vasir lachatat. Since if the tzibur messes up and they think that something's not a vodazara, right? The the baiting teachers, and then it turns out it was a vodazara, and they all did it. What would you have to do? You bring a parla ola a bull for an ola offering and a seir a goat for a chatat. Inu nami netu ipcha ipcha. Maybe if it's a city, you would flip it. You bring the bull for the sin offering, and you bring the goat for the ola for the burnt offering. That's one suggestion. Or you might have thought you need to bring a unique carbon, but we don't have a unique carbon. And maybe if a city does it unwillingly, there's no solution and you can't ever get atonement for it. That's why you need the drasha to teach you. No, it's just like an individual. Okay? Not what you might have thought. It doesn't have its own unique law. Now we get to, that's the end of that section. Okay, we finished Rebbe and the rabbis. This is all about their Joshua Allah. How do we get to all the bases of the Mishnah? Now we're going back to the Mishnah. The Mishnah, as you know, listed 15 cases. Okay, if you haven't reviewed them yet, you can go review them again. Um, anyway, the Mishnah listed 15 cases. Amalei Levi le Rebbe. My area de Tani Chamisha Asal. Litne Shisha Asal. Why does it say 15? Should have said 16. So, Rebbe has a very, okay, talk about strong reactions. Rebbe has a very strong reaction to this comment of Levi. And you can read flashback of Shulim Mishkin to talk about a little bit of the history of Rebbe and Levi. And, uh, suggestion as to why he reacted so harshly. This guy seems to have no brain in his head. Okay, and he doesn't even talk to him directly. He says, right, it seems to me like this guy has no brain in his head. He's talking about him in the third person. Then he says, my data. what were you thinking exactly? Okay, what were you thinking? Imo Anusat Aviv? Were you thinking of Imo Anusat Aviv and that that should have been there? Imo Anusat Aviv plugged into Rabbi Yudav Rabbanani uba plugged to lo kamayre. I'll talk about Imo Anusat Aviv in one second. Let's just get through the line. He says, what? Is that the case you wanted to add? That case the Machloket. The rabbis of Rabbi Yehuda, there's a debate about this case, whether the Tzarot are permitted or not. And therefore, this Mishnah wasn't dealing with things that were debatable. Okay, it only mentioned things that were agreed upon by everybody, right? If you can imagine such a thing. So, here goes. Here's our case of Imo Anusat Aviv. Okay, we're going to have a lot of charts now. Yiftach marries Tamar and they have a son named Shimon. Okay, so far no rape yet. Okay, now, Imo Anusat Aviv means the mother, right, who was raped by his father. So now, Yiftach, in the meantime, rapes a woman named Yael. Again, right, this is theoretical, right? All these cases are very theoretical. But, I mean, maybe it could happen, but Yiftach rapes Yael, and they have a son named Reuven. Okay, so Reuven and Shimon are brothers through their father, which means that if Yibum, right, if one dies without children, they do Yibum because anyone who shares a father does Yibum, okay? It's always brothers by the father. Okay, that we'll get to, why that is and all that. Now, what if the woman who Yiftach raped went ahead and married Yiftach's son? Okay, so Yael was here. She moves down here. We kind of left her there faded so that you could see. So she was Yiftach Yiftach's rape victim. Now she ends up marrying his son. And his son has another wife named Shula. So that's going to be the Tzara. So now you can figure this out. If Shimon's going to die, Yael, okay, falls to Yibun to Reuven. Now, what's her relationship to Reuven? Imo Anusat David. It's his mother who is, comes through rape from the father. So there's a debate about this case, about whether Shula is exempt or not. Okay? So there's a debate between Rabbi Yehuda and the rabbis. Because it's through rape, maybe it's different. And therefore, comes the Gemara. And the Gemara says, because there's a debate about this, therefore, it's not mentioned in the Mishnah. 
Okay, that's what you have to understand. So now, they say, wait a minute, Villo. And again, we're going to have some situations here where I'm not going to explain everything yet today because it, this reference is a lot of other sugyot. Some of them I will because I feel like it's important. Some of them I'm just going to mention in a minute and we're going to move on because otherwise we'll never finish our gas. Villo, is it really true that the Mishnah in Yavamo, right now they're assuming it means the Mishnah in Yavamo in general, doesn't mention things that are issues of debate? Go look in chapter 3. There's things that are Yisro Mitzvah. There's things that are Yisro Kedusha. I'm not going to get into what all that is. We'll see it when we get to chapter 3. And there happens to be a machlok at Rabbi Kiva Rabbanan mentioned in the Mishnah. And yet it says it there. So what do you mean we don't mention things that are not that are machlokot? Bit Pirkin Kamrin. And I was talking about in our chapter, not in chapter 3. I was talking about in our chapter. Okay, well, if you want to say our chapter, well, let's look farther. You're going to find this very interesting. Later we're going to see a Mishnah. that basically says that our whole Mishnah is only according to Beit Hillel. Beit Shammai thinks that the Tzarot can marry the brothers. They have a whole different view of this whole thing. Tzarot can marry brothers, no problem, even if the first wife was Isur Arayot. And they have Machloket. So what do you mean the Mishnah in our chapter doesn't mention Machloket? So they have an interesting answer. Beit Shammai, but Makom Beit Hillel in a Mishnah. Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel, that's not a machlo, it's a machloket. But it doesn't bother us to mention it because everybody knows that we hold like Beit Hillel. So everyone will know that Beit Shammai, right, we don't hold that way, so they don't mind mentioning it because everyone knows what the story is. We don't want to mention things that are disputes because we don't, people won't know which is which and what. But this everybody knows, so it's not a problem to mention. What about the 14th case in our Mishnah? You remember this? If a couple is married, and the husband dies before a new brother is born, we say, the brother's not there in the picture, she can't do Yibam with him, and then she's forbidden to him forever. He will always be a riot, right? Even if she marries another brother and that brother's alive, and then the right, let's say she does Yibum with a brother, with she does Yibum with Shimon, okay? I didn't do a chart here because I'm going to do it on a much more complicated case that builds off of this, so we'll see that later. But I'll explain it in simply, which is if she she's married to Ruvain, Ruvain dies. She then married before she does even with Shimon, a uh, new brother's born, then or even after, we'll talk about that after. If she marries Shimon, she does Yibum with him, because that she can't marry him otherwise. According to the rabbis, she will forever be forbidden to that new brother that was born, because he is Eshet Ach compared to her first husband. Rabbi Shimon disagrees a little bit. Rabbi Shimon says, and this is going to be the thing, Rabbi Shimon says that if she's born, uh, the, sorry, the brother's born before she does Yibam with Shimon, then you're right. It will be forbidden to her forever. But if the child is born after she already does Yibam with Shimon, then she creates a new relationship with this new brother. And if the new brother's born before Shimon were to die, she'd be able to do Yibam with him. That's what Rabbi Shimon says. Okay, we'll see it inside in a minute, in a few minutes. But the idea here is that's Eshet Achiv Shelo Bala Olamo. If you have a brother who was not around when the husband died, Depligi Rabbi Shimon Verabanan. There's a machloket with them about a particular case within that, and the Katane, right? Uh, uh, sorry, period. So that's a machloket, and yet it's mentioned in the Mishnah. So again, how can you say the Mishnah doesn't mention things that are topics, subjects of debate? So they say, well, there is a case where they agree about, which is what I said before. If Nolad, if the kid was born bef- after Ruvain died, before she did Yibam with Shimon, that brother will be forever forbidden, even according to Rabbi Shimon. Since there is one case about that they agree on, you could put it in the Mishnah. That's the answer. The answer is, they disagree within that case about a particular scenario, but they don't disagree about everything, and therefore it can be in the Mishnah. But Rabbi Yoshaya says, no, this isn't an erva at all, according to Rabbi Shimon. And we'll get to this later in the Gemara. This will be discussed much more in depth later. But Rabbi Yoshaya's question is knocked off, and therefore, don't, don't, don't bother with it. Okay? So basically, the answer is, right, we keep trying to say, is there really no machloket? We saw machloket in Perak Shlishi. Oh, that doesn't bother us. We saw machloket in Shammai. That doesn't bother us. We saw machloket Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Rabbanan about this. That doesn't bother us because there is a case they all agree about that it's forbidden, and that's the case the Mishnah is referring to. If you didn't understand the case fully, we're going to see it at the very end, so you'll get it again. 
Now they say, okay, now we're going to start a long question that's only going to end at the end. So right now, imagine we're, at, put out of your mind why we're bringing this sugi. Okay, we're bringing it again as a case. Isn't there a machloket mentioned in the Mishnah? But put that out of your mind because we're really going to deal with that even more tomorrow. Right now, I want you just to fully understand what we're talking about. This is a bit of a complicated case. Didn't Rabbi Yehuda say in the name of Rav? V'chein tani Rabbi Chia. And Rabbi Chia had a bright about this. Remember, Rabbi Chia is the one who put together the Tosefta. He had a parallel to our Mishnah that really kind of discussed our Mishnah and related. Often it relates to the Mishnah. Bikulam, with all, now we assume Kulam right now means all 15 cases in the Mishnah. Ani kore behen, I can find a case. Ha'asura lezeh mutera lezeh, ha'asura lezeh mutera lezeh. V'achotashi yivim tacholet zedom mitabemet. Okay, you're not supposed to really understand any word of that yet. Okay, and in fact, before we even learn this, we have to learn the background of the, the Mishnah on Daf Kavav, which relates to this. Okay, like I said, sometimes I'm going to teach you things that are said elsewhere if they're necessary for right here. So let's go to the Mishnah on Daf Kavav before we even learn this. The Mishnah there discusses Arba'a Achim, four brothers, Shnai Mehenisu Ochte Achayot. Four brothers, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, are married to Rachel and Leah. Then, Metu Hanisuim et Achayot. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry, uh, I didn't say this right. Okay, let's just look at the pictures. So now, so they're married to two sisters. Reuven marries Rachel, Shimon marries Leah. Okay, now what happens? Umetu. Both Reuven and Shimon die. Now what becomes the issue here? The halacha is going to be, the, uh, the wives can only do chalitza, they can't do yibum. Why? So what happens here is, as soon as they both die, assume, let's say they're in a car accident, so they both die at the exact same moment. Rachel falls to Levi for Yibum and to Yehuda. And at the same time, Leah falls to Levi and Yehuda. Remember we talked about Zika, that they're connected, right? Until they do Yibum, they're actually connected to all the brothers. Well, now you have a problem because Levi, you can see this very well from the picture, has Rachel and Leah, he's supposed to marry them both. And Yehuda's also supposed to marry them both, theoretically. Which means each one is actually, this is what's called Achot Zikukato. If you, you're not allowed to, or it's, it's kind of like that. You're not allowed to marry two sisters, right? And they're each supposed to marry two sisters. So because of that, and there's something called the Chotziku If you're, you can't marry someone whose sister you're supposed to do Yibam with. So now we have a problem because, and that's only rabbinic, okay? And that's why they're going to have to do Chalitza, not Yibam. They're not exempt, but they can't do they can't do Yibum because Levi can't marry Rachel because he's supposed to marry Leah. And Yehuda can't marry Leah because he's supposed to marry Rachel and the reverse. Okay, that's the, ba- the background for this Mishnah. So therefore, Rachel has to do, right? They have to do Chalitza with Rachel and they have to do Chalitza with Leah. Now, here comes our case. We're now going to come up with a case where Hasura leze is Mutere leze. There we said both had Zika to each of them equally. We're now going to construct a case, and apparently what he's saying is you can construct a case with all 15 cases in our Mishnah, where one will be permitted to one and the other will be permitted to the other, right? The one that she can't marry, the other one can marry. Okay, how do we get it? I'm going to use the case of Hamoto, because in a minute they're going to say, that's like where we start really with Hamoto. We'll talk about that in a minute, but let's say mother-in-law. Okay, is mother-in-law. I'm going to have the arayot of mother-in-law in this case. Four brothers again married to two sisters, okay, and each Sit, each wife has a child. Rachel has a child called Reut. Leah has a child called Livna. Notice the letters, right? R, R, L, L. That'll help you remember. So now, Rachel marries Reuven and Leah marries Shimon. And then Reut marries Levi and Livna marries Yehuda. So all four of them, the mothers and the daughters, are married to these four brothers. Now, that's all permitted. Reuven and Shimon die. When Reuven and Shimon die, what happens? Rachel and Leah fall to Yibum to Levi and Yehuda. But... Levi, his mother-in-law is Rachel, and Yehuda, his mother-in-law is Leah. So Yehuda can't marry Leah, and Levi can't marry Rachel. So in the end, the Zika is only one to one, and there's no one to two. So therefore, Rachel is permitted to Yehuda, and Leah is permitted to Levi. Okay, and that's what means asura lezem muteret leze, asura lezem muteret leze. Right, each one is forbidden to one, but permitted to the other. So even though. If there, there wasn't more of a relationship between them, the sisters wouldn't be allowed to do Yibam with the two brothers. They would have to do Chalitza. In this case, it would work because the Zika to one of them is an Arayot issue. And you can basically construct that case according to the simple reading of Rabbi Chia with all 15 cases of the Mishnah. Now, and then Achota Shiyivimta, right? Her sister, who's also a Yivama, does Chalitza or Mitya She could also do Yibam if she wanted. Now comes Rabbi Yehuda. 
Rabbi Yehuda says, now we're going to have three ways to understand this kulam. I can say all of these cases I can say because we're going to see it's not necessarily all cases. Rabbi Yehuda mitargem mechamoto va'elach. Rabbi Yehuda says, it's not the first six cases. Shita babi shalo. The first six cases are all based on Bito, his daughter. You can't have a case of Bito from marriage. You can only have a case, we're going to read this inside, my timer. Kevan de Bito ba'onsi mishkachat. But binisu in la you can only have a case of Bito from a rape. That would work here. You can't have Bito from an actual daughter. And therefore, Benisun Kamari, Ba'onsin Lo Kamari. Our mission was dealing with marriage cases, not rape cases, even though we did see maybe it was. But let's go with Rav Yehuda right now. He says it was only dealing with marriage and not rape cases. And therefore, when he said Bekulam, he didn't mean the first six. Because you can't have a case. Why can't you have a case? Well, let's see. Ruvain's married to Yael, and they have a daughter, Leah. Okay, and then there's still three brothers, Shimon Levi and Yehuda. Reuven and Yael get divorced, or something happens. Yael then would have to marry, in order for this to happen, Yael would have to marry Shimon and have a child, Rachel. But Yael can't marry Shimon. As in order to have two of the sisters who end up marrying the four brothers in a case where a woman would fall to Yibam to her father, it would have to be a case where Yael married Shimon, where she married the brother, and she can't marry the brother. It's a prohibited marriage. So Yael would never get to a scenario where she would marry Shimon and have a daughter, Rachel, and then the daughters, both, right, they would marry Levi and Yehuda. Both of them would die. They'd fall to Yibam, to Reuben and Shimon, and they couldn't because he's, there's, she's the daughter. That, and, and you have to have a case where each is the daughter of the other, and yet they're sisters. So you can't have each being the daughter of a different, a different brother and yet be sisters because that would never happen because it's forbidden. So therefore, there is no case of that. So he says, skip the first six cases, drop them, because remember, they're all outgrowths of daughter. Daughter, daughter's daughter, daughter's, right, your son's daughter. Everything was daughter-related. The daughter of your wife and the daughter, right? It all went like that. But how could you have it with rape? So Reuven rapes Yael, has Leah. Now, because he raped her, theoretically, Shimon could rape Yael as well again, right? This isn't, I'm not talking about he could do this, okay, if he were to do such a terrible thing. But it's not the Isser of Eshet Ach because he wasn't married to the wife. So theoretically, you could have a situation where there were two daughters born out of rape, Leah and Rachel. Then they each married Levi and Yehuda. And then they each, Levi and Yehuda both died, and they each fall to Yibam to Reuven and Shimon. Again, Leah has no relationship to Shimon, and Rachel has no relationship to Reuven. That's forbidden. So again, there you would have a case where Leah is permitted to Shimon, Rachel is permitted to Reuven because each one it's their father from rape. And that actually is a case, but comes from Yehuda anyway and says, it can't be that they're talking about that case because the mission doesn't mention rape. So first explanation of Rabbi Chia is when he said Bekulam, he didn't mean all 15. He meant cut off the first six and only starting from mother-in-law and aunt. Next explanation. Um, Abayi mitaragem af bito me'anu seto. Abayi just says simply, no, add all the cases of bito and say it's a rape case. doesn't bother me if the Mishnah mentions a rape case. Kevan de ishkuchuchem mishkachala. Since there could be a case, Ibayim and Aonsin Tavi, Ibayim and Asuin Tavi. In other words, the Mishnah mentions cases that are either from rape or from marriage. And yes, he does mean all the cases. Aval ish, dachif shalob olamo, lo. But you can't have a case of Eshet Achiv Shalob Baal Olamo. That there wouldn't be a situation because remember, Eshet Achiv Shalob Baal Olamo, he'll be forever forbidden. So if there's some brother that's born later, the wife, at least according to the rabbis, will be forbidden forever to the brother and you'd never have a case where, right, the wife will be permitted. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. So he says, my time. Again, we don't talk about debates here. So, <clears throat> issues that are debatable. So therefore, if it's esh dachiv shaloya ba'avolamo, you would only have a situation with these, we'll see in a minute, with six brothers, that it would work by Rabbi Shimon that you could actually have a case since the machloket, it's not mentioned in the Mishnah. Comes Rav Safra. Rav Safra mitargem af esh dachiv shaloya ba'avolamo. So we either had, it d- gets rid of the first six cases. Kulan doesn't really mean kulan. Or kulan means everything except case number 14 because that's the machloket. Or Rav Safra is going to say it's Kulam and it includes case number 14 and I don't care that it's a machloket and that's going to basically be our question. Didn't we say you don't say anything that's a machloket? We'll get back to that tomorrow. But let's understand Rav Safra. Rav Safra, Rav Safra says it's even Esh Tachiv Shaloya Bolamo and Mishkach Allah B'Shita Achim Ba'aliba De Rabbi Shimon. And then he gives a siman, how you remember this? Mate no lavi yibem, mate no lavi yibem. It's an easy way to remember. You can see that they also got confused by these cases and that's why they gave these simani. So let's get the case and with that we'll finish. 
Yaakov and Leah are married. They have four sons, Reuben, Levi, Shimon, and Yehuda. Then Reuben marries Tamar. Shimon marries Yael. They're not related to each other. Okay, they, okay. what happens now? We want an Eshet Achiv Shaloa Olamo, a baby that's born after. So Reuben dies. Tamar is waiting to do Yibum. In the meantime, Yisachar is born. After Yisachar is born, Tamar can't do Yibum with him. Tamar is forbidden to him. Right now, we assume forever. Okay? According to Rabbi Shimon, there's a way she's going to be permitted, and that's what we're going to get to soon. But right now, Tamar now does Yibum with Levi. So she, since it was Nolad, right? It was Nolad, um, sorry, uh, mate, Nolad Yibam, right? He died. Then the kid was born. Then she did Yibum. So now she'll be forever forbidden according to the rabbis. And even Rabbi Shimon will say in that case, she's forbidden to Yisachar. Okay, but since she does Yibum with Levi, okay, you'll see later that one, when, if Levi is going to die, since when she's married to Levi, okay, this is Rabbi Shimon's unique law. Yisachar is in the world, right? He's alive now. When Levi dies, she's no longer going to be forbidden to Yisachar. The rabbis disagree. They say since she was married to Reuven and the kid wasn't born in Reuven's lifetime, she's never permitted. Comes Rabbi Shimon, he's going to allow it. Okay, so let's just keep going on. Shimon marries Yael in the meantime. Okay, Zvulun is born, at, Shimon dies, and Zvulun is born after Shimon dies. So again, we're going to have the exact same scenario. Yael does Yibum with Yehuda after Zvulun's alive, so she's going to be forbidden to Zvulun. In the meantime, Levi's going to die. This is the main thing. According to Rabbi Shimon, since Levi died and Yisachar was alive when Levi was married to Tamal, Tamal ends up being permitted to Yisachar. But Yael is prohibited to Zvulun. She's permitted to Yisachar because she married Yehuda. <coughs> when you, I'm sorry, she married Shimon. Her first husband, when she was, when, before he died, Yisachar was already alive. So basically, one is, we have a case only according to Rabbi Shimon, where yet one sister can marry one of the little brothers and the other sister can marry the other one. Okay. And that's all based on this weird approach of Rabbi Shimon. The main thing to remember, even if you don't get all the details, is that according to the rabbis, Eshachim Shaloya Ba'olomo will always be forbidden. Once you're married to the first husband, if he died before the brother was born, you will never, ever, ever be allowed to marry that brother. That's not what we're describing here. According to that, you could never have a case because the first wife will be forbidden to Yisachar and Zvulun, so she won't be able to marry either one. And the second wife will only be forbidden to Zvulun because Zvulun was already alive when her husband died. But according to Rabbi Shimon, if the first husband dies and she does Yibam with the second, and while she's married to the second husband, this kid is alive, the, the Isur of Eshet Ach that returned because, you know, that was there from the beginning because the first, she never was able to do Yibam with him. When with the second husband she could do Yibam with him, she's already permitted to do that. Okay? So why do we bring these? Okay, you're asking. Again, I'll review this tomorrow. But we brought these three explanations of Rabbi Chia really just for Rav Safra. Because according to Rav Safra, what comes out? The other brother said, when Rabbi Chia said, Vikulam, all these cases in the Mishnah, I can read all this, right? We, we can say, Asura lezem, Buteret lezem, etc. They're, they're doing something weird, which the Gemara is going to reject tomorrow. But they're basically saying what Rabbi Chia says is as if it's in the Mishnah, even though it's not, okay? And then our Mishnah, according to Rav Safra, is talking about a case where there's a machloket. Because in this case, this case would only be true, Asura lezem, Buteret lezem, would only be true in Eshel Achim Shalom Olamo, according to Rabbi Shimon. And that's a subject of debate, okay? To which the Gemara is going to answer, Rabbi Chia is not the author of our Mishnah, so it doesn't really matter. It's a bit of a weird question. That's why I, I, I'll deal more with the question tomorrow. If you didn't 100% understand it, I'll start class with it before we answer the question. Okay, that's it for today. Very long daf, but we have a lot to do, and uh, we will pick up tomorrow.